This is Federica, part of the DOCSI team, and it's my pleasure to welcoming you all to this live webinar. Today, we are connected with BI Norwegian Business School, and I'd like to welcome our speaker, Shani Persson. She's the Senior Advisor, International Marketing and Recruitment at BI Norwegian Business School. Today, we're going to talk about what it's like to study in Norway. And I leave now the floor to Shani, but I look forward to receiving all of your questions. Use the chat, the Q&A, and we will be answering at the end of the presentation. Shani, leave you the floor, and I look forward to receiving questions from the audience. That's fantastic. Thank you, Federica. And it's wonderful to see where everybody's from. As Federica said, I'm uh, situated in Norway. I'm sitting here in downtown Oslo. Um, it's uh, six o'clock, so it's a little bit dark because it's now winter time. And this is November is when the when the darkness comes in a little bit earlier. The days are shorter, but it's also the time of year where Norwegians pull out all of the candles and um, uh, if you've been following some of the trends over the last few years, the, Nor the, 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 the Danish word is higa, but in Norway it's called kushli. It's a kushli time. It's a very cozy time and you turn on the fire, you, you light the candles and you, get, you cuddle in for uh, the winter evenings. Uh, but once the snow starts, that <laughs> Norwegians will get out at this time of the night um, and go skiing uh, and cross-country skiing because all of the the forests around Norway are lit. There are um, there are cross-country tracks that are lit in the forest around Norway. So not unusual to grab a bite to eat and then go for a ski uh, in the evenings. It's wonderful to see people from all over the world. As Federica said, we are heading to uh, to India this coming week. We will be in Delhi, uh, we will be in Bangalore, and we will be in Mumbai over the next two weeks. Um, I see Brazil. Um, I unfortunately have not been back to Brazil since 2020, uh, but my colleagues just came back. They were in Rio, Sao Paulo, uh, Belo, uh, Curitiba, and Brasilia. And I also see Colombia, so that's nice as well. I was in Bogota for the first time a couple of weeks ago as well. So we that should give you a sense of how um, much that we appreciate international students looking to study in Norway. And we know, we know that Norway may not be the most obvious choice. We know we're not one of the most of uh, the usual suspects, I should say, for international study. But we also know that we have a good offering for you. We have a good offering in English, um, and it is a wonderful place to live. As I said, I'm Canadian. I chose to move here uh, seven years ago. Yeah, seven years ago now, heavens. And it is a wonderful, a wonderful place to live. I'm going to talk a little bit about Norway, about Norwegian culture and some of the values, things that you can expect. Um, I'll then talk about BI Norwegian Business School um, and why we hope that we would be a choice for you, that you would consider. We'll touch a little bit about our programs when I talk about BI Norwegian Business School. Uh, and then we'll wrap up with some practical information and a little bit of um, a few memories that students have shared with us about their, their time uh, studying in Norway. But in the meantime, we do encourage you uh, to tell us where you're from in the, in the chat function so that we get an idea of where everybody's joining us from around the world. I'm going to now share my screen. So please bear with me. Technology is not always my friend, but we'll, we'll, give it, we'll do our best. All right, can you see my screen, Federica? Great, it's not full screen, the presentation. It's not so, full screen? Not yet. It might just be the display setting, just need to change it. Okay, let me just try this again. Meantime, we have Beatrice from Brazil, and then we have another student from Romania. Great. Why is this not working? We had just had it a minute ago, and it was working. That's the beauty of live events. Mm -hmm. Why is that not working? Share screen. My apologies, everyone. Perfect. Is that full screen now? It is full screen. Perfect. Perfect. Thank Beautifully you. Beautifully done. Thank thanks you. For your, thanks for your patience, everyone. So let's talk a little bit about Norway. 
<clears throat> I'm just going to move a few things out of the way so that I uh, it makes sense for me and what I see. So let's talk a little bit about Norway and uh, some of the fresh perspectives. So there are some key Norwegian values that may you may find particularly attractive, and especially right now, we know that climate, climate change, sustainability is top of mind with the conference that's happening, uh, the global conferences that are happening in regards to sustainability. Norway is very committed to sustainability issues and has been for many, many years. Um, one of the key things is our electricity. The electricity is hydropower. Um, you will see companies, leading companies in the world that have moved over to renewable energy, such as Equinor. Um, it's not uncommon, actually, it's, it's very common for uh, many families to own electric cars. And it's not just that there's a commitment to electric cars. The government put their money where their mouth is and that there was... There were a lot of tax incentives, there were a lot of tax breaks, there were a lot of, and there's the infrastructure in place to support the use of electric vehicles. So it is common to, you know, drive from one city to another and along the way there are the charging stations um, so that you can make longer journeys uh, when it comes to electric cars and you will see that, for example, um, T there's a lot of taxis that are Teslas or electric. You will find that the the uh, in 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 Oslo the public transportation there's a shift to electric buses. So there's a real commitment to uh, sustainability uh, in many many ways. One of the, our commitments at BI to sustainability is that we raise bees on the roof of uh, campus uh, because we know how important bees are to the ecosystem. Another cultural value for you to think, consider and think about is the commitment to equality uh, in Norway. We, Norway has been one at the forefront when it comes to gender equality, for example. And it's, it's not just embedded in the values, but it's also embedded in legislation such as there was a real commitment to ensure that there was board representation by women. Um, you will find that uh, Norway supports uh, working families and that both the both partners, whether it be male and female or female, female, male, male, both partners participate in that one year of uh, parental leave. And that's by law. Both must take take their period of time with the young with young children in the in that um, within the legislation. Uh, and you see that in the workplace as well. It's it's you see a lot of female female leadership. Um, and um, there's a real commitment to diversity in the workplace. One of the things that I appreciate in terms of a Norwegian value coming from North America is there is a commitment to work-life balance. So going back to what I said about commitment to families, you will see the same in the work-life balance. What I mean by this is there isn't this drive to work to live, it's to live to work. There is a drive to live to work, not work to live. Um, it's, you know, eight, eight to five or eight to four. Um, the, there's, it, it does create a little bit of pressure for some families because they need to get to the Barnahaga, which is the kindergarten to pick up the kids by quarter to five. So, you know, even the structures are in place that, you know, you need to get home to your family. There's a work-life balance. Um, working at BI Norwegian Business Schools, our day is, check, is supposed to be eight to three or nine to four. Um, I will be honest, I will put up my hand coming from Canada. I still have not mastered the work-life balance. Uh, and I continue to learn year by year about the importance of work-life balance. And you see that in, as I said, um, you know, getting the, the hours that the kindergartens are open for the families to get there to pick up the children. You see it in, um, you, you'll see it in the, in the, in, in, on campus. It might, you might come to work, you might come to campus and there will be someone with their skis over their shoulder because they'll come to class. And then as soon as class is over four o'clock or four 30, then they're, you know, on the bus. They're going a half hour by bus and they're going in for a ski before they go home. So there's a real commitment to getting home, spending time with the family and then doing some sort of activity. The other thing, uh, another aspect of the society, which maybe uh, differs from societies around the world is the Scandinavian leadership model. It really is a, in the workplace, there is a lack of hierarchy. 
you know, you, you, you will come and you will call your professors by their first name. There's not, it's not professor this or doctor that, it's Costas, it's Auka, it's Mariana. Uh, and that is the same for the work, the workplaces. There's very little uh, distance between myself and the president, for example. Um, this is part of the, the, the Scandinavian leadership model. It's, it's a leadership model where you learn from who you report to and who you report to learns from you. Uh, it's a model where uh, you ask questions and you, you bring forth ideas and that is encouraged um, and you are expected to show that initiative and you're expected to, to be uh, in, independent of thought and be accountable for your, own, uh, for your own work and not always getting direction coming down. It's very much collaboration. Another value is a commitment to education, and you will see that from, uh, you know, from, as I mentioned, kindergarten all the way up to, to universities. And, uh, you know, public uh, kindergartens are very, very affordable so that women can get back into the workplace, going back to equality in the workplace, uh, and, and parents can get back into the workplace. Um, I, we are highly ranked ourselves when it comes to business education. And that is very common across the country when it comes to accessibility to education. And that's what it's about. It's about accessibility, accessibility to education. And when we talk about Norway and we talk about the benefits of living in Norway, um, it's not just Norwegians saying, oh, look, don't we do well? And actually, Norwegians will not say, oh, look at us. Aren't we, we, we do really well, we're number one. Norwegians actually, it's a cultural value not to stand out and brag, but I am Canadian, so I can talk about, you know, Norway being one of the, ranked as one of the best countries in the world to live, that it's been ranked as one of the happiest uh, countries to live. It's been ranked in the top five most sustainable countries uh, to live in. So, and, and a friend of mine just sent me uh, a, a, um, a most recent ranking, which probably is way, way off in your future, but it was, it's one of the, it is the top place in the world to retire right now. It's ranked the top place in the world to retire. So there are lots of factors and lots of rankings and lots of, um, uh, yeah, I guess rankings for you to look at in terms of why Norway. Um, and it is one of the happiest places in the world to live. And, it, and as I said, these are a few of the values for you to consider when you're looking for a country in which to study. Uh -huh, this was working earlier and now it's not. What happened, Frederica? Why is this not working? So the slide is not changing, but let's have okay. a Okay, we'll try this one. Now, what else makes it a great place to live? And I saw that, um, you know, when we look at where everyone's from, safety is a big, can be a bit of a concern. Um, when we talk, you know, I've, I've traveled to some countries that are being listed. Norway is a very safe place to live. It, it, it is a say there's very little crime rate, a very small, very low crime rate. Um, it's never very crowded. A lot of it comes from it's, it is a small country. You know, there's 6 million people. Um, you never. it's never, you're never really crowded. So it is safe. There's, it's also a strong and stable economy. In fact, you know, throughout the pandemic, Norway um, has a reserve fund, uh, the pension fund. So there, you know, even if people were uh, furloughed or uh, laid off, the, they had government support for that. So there's great social network. There's a great societal network in place that helps build a strong and stable economy. And in fact, it's a growing economy. It's also very stable politically. The Norwegian system is built on consensus. So um, the social democracy, um, there is a you know three four per, three four party consensus uh, government uh, that will bring forward um, all the policies. You will also find, as I mentioned about sustainability, green cities, clean water. I had a friend visiting from uh, from home. And he kept commenting about how clean the water was in the city and how tasty it was. And that's, you know, the drinking water as well as, you know, just going down in, in, uh, in Oslo to the beach, um, right in the harbor and being able to swim off the front of the, um, of the Monk Museum or the uh, Ostrup Fernley Museum downtown. So clean water. As a student, 
we know that you're looking, you know, for many of you, English is your second language already. It could be your third language as well. One of the things that you should know is that in Norway, English is very widely spoken. So you will need English for your studies, but also on a day-to-day -day basis, you can get by with Norwegian or with English, sorry. The, the, the language is Norwegian, but Norwegians learn English at a very, very young age. So in your daily life in, Nor in Oslo and in Bergen, where we have campuses that have English programs, you will not need to know Norwegian. You will get by, you can definitely uh, live very comfortably with English only because English is very widely spoken in Norway. Now, on the note about Norwegian, what we recommend to students is, you know, if your long-term goal is to stay in Norway after you graduate in the hopes of putting your, the skills and knowledge that you learned into finding a job in Norway, we recommend that you look at starting to learn Norwegian. Now, some people can master another language very quickly. I'm not one of them, um, but uh, we also make, we do make Norwegian classes available to our students for free over and above um, what you're already studying in terms of your business education to help you just have that conversation, those initial conversations with employers to also show that you are serious. It's a, it's a signal to employers that you're serious about staying and worth the investment. But for your studies, uh, you do not need uh, Norwegian. You don't need to learn a third or fourth language. Um, you have, you've already learned English and it's very widely spoken. Norway is also known for its stunning nature and its outdoor activity. I used these slides uh, purposely. You can see my backdrop of the Northern Lights. The, nor the nature in Norway is stunning, whether it be the fjords, the harbors, the mountains, the forests, it is an absolutely gorgeous country and the Northern Lights is one of the, uh, the highlights of your time. Uh, and we hope that when you study here that you do get the chance to go farther up north to see it, but there are times when you can see the Northern Lights here in Oslo. Uh, in fact, last winter, uh, we had a lot of the students were taking pictures. One of our student residences in Oslo is near a lake called Songsvon. It's only a five minute walk to Songsvon. Um, and, you know, they were camped out at night to get us get sightings of uh, the northern lights. And they took some spectacular pictures. And contrary to uh, perception, um, Norway is known to be, is perceived to be very expensive. And if you were coming here as a tourist, of course, and like it's in most major cities, especially major European capital cities, um, being, paying a tourist can be expensive. But if you are living here as a student, it is an affordable option for you. Um, as I said, I came back from Colombia and from Mexico just recently, we're heading to, to India. And we talked to our colleagues who are in higher education around the world. What you need to know about education in Norway is that tuition and living expenses, you should be budgeting around 25 to 30,000 US per year. That will cover both because we know that uh, students will find all the best deals. There are lots of discounts for students in Norway. The student accommodation is somewhat subsidized already by government. Your public transportation costs are half of what I pay. So it is an affordable option when you're looking at other English language destinations. I'm from Canada, I know uh, what business education can cost an international student in Canada, the US, England. So in, in Norway, 25 to 30,000 US dollars per year will cover your living and your tuition, whereas 25 to 30,000 US might just be your tuition in another area in another country. Uh, 20, you know, we say that your living expenses are around 13 to 14,000 per year. That is much less than what you would pay in London or Paris or some other major cities uh, in, in the US, in Canada uh, and elsewhere in Europe. So it is an affordable option. We know any international education um, is expensive. It's an investment of your time and it's an investment of your, your money as well as your parents' money. We know that the families do support you, but it is an affordable option when you look at it in comparison to some of the other more common study destinations around the world. 
So we in, I'll be talking just briefly about two cities in Norway, um, Oslo and Bergen. And this, I talk about these cities because, because we have English programs at both of these, these cities. So Oslo is the nation's capital. It is a small population, um, large, spread out geographically. And it's a port city, a harbor city that is surrounded by forests. There's lots of uh, islands in the in the Oslo Fjord, and there's about 700,000 people. One of the ways that I describe Oslo is that it is a European capital city, so it has everything that a capital city should have. Um, but it is, um, but it, it feels like a smaller town. You're never in a really in a crowd, except maybe on you know National Day, which is May 17th. Um, it's never really a crowd. You're never crowded. Uh, you never feel like you're in a crowd here and never feels like a big, big city. Um, I mean, I see there's there were people here from Brazil. You know, there's six million cars in Brazil. I mean, there's six only six million people in Norway. So that gives you a sense of scale. I, I guess the other city where we have a campus that offers uh, English programs and that's for, at the master level is Bergen and Bergen is on the west coast of Norway. It's the regional capital that is and, and it, it's a city. It's a region that's that has industries in relation to um, marine industry, media industry, seafood industry. It's a, really a capital around a lot of marine areas. Their population is around less than 300,000. And it, it too is a port city. It too is a, a harbor city that is surrounded by seven mountains, actually. Um, and again, that's something where, you know, our students have talked about, you know, hiking the seven mountains. You know, this weekend we're going to go to this one, that next weekend we're going to go to that one. So there's a lot to be offered in these cities that are both that are vibrant, that are the nation's capital or the regional capital, and that are welcoming to international students. So let's move on a little bit to why uh, BI Norwegian Business School. One of the questions I get asked a lot is, what does BI stand for? And BI does stand for the original name of the school. The original name of the school in Norwegian is Bedrifts Economisk Institute. So there's your first uh, Norwegian lesson, Bedrifts Economic Institute, which is essentially Business Institute. And our Business Institute uh, started back in 1943. Um, which is, you know, and a success story in itself because it was an entrepreneurial venture at a time when Norway was actually occupied during the war and uh, started as a night school. Uh, but now we are a the leading business school in Norway. We are the top 1% of business schools worldwide because we have the three primary accreditations that you should be looking for when you're looking at business school education. We know there are lots of choices out there. There are 15,000 programs out there. Um, but there's only about a little over 100 that have the three main accreditations that you need to be looking for. And you will find those accreditations on almost every piece of <laughs> every piece of uh, collateral and our website when we talk about uh, AMBA, Equus and uh, AS, AACSB, AASCB, AACSB, sorry. <laughs> uh, so those are the three accreditations. So whenever you're looking for an international education, you're looking for business education, you should be looking at accreditations. And these are external organizations that do a quality check, and that should give you a reassurance of the type of program that you're looking for. We're one of Europe's best and largest business schools right now. We're number one in Norway uh, by the Financial Times. And we are the second largest business school in Europe when it comes to um, uh, enrollment. We have four campuses in Oslo, in Norway, that are quite are, that are very technology rich. There's a lot of um, light and wood in terms of the structure um, and the architecture. Our, our our building in Oslo, for example, uh, the architect was the same architecture who did the the Norwegian um, sorry the Oslo airport. We're a very international school. 30% uh, of our faculty are international. We have a lot, we have administration like myself who are international, and we have students representing 75 nations around the globe. So what else should you be thinking about when you're looking at BI Norwegian Business School? Well, you know, rankings do matter. As I said, uh, we are the number one business school in Norway. We're considered top 50 in Europe. The Economist in 2021 ranked our uh, master in business uh, as number 32 in the world. 
And uh, Financial Times, our MSC in finance is number 48 in the world. So rankings do matter. These are the types of things that give you an indication of the quality of a program. We're also ranked by QS uh, for some specific, specific master's programs. Um, as you can see, business analytics, top 30, MSC in business, 31, strategic marketing management, Again, top 30, we're at number 25, and our MSC at number 43. So these are types of ind indicators that you should be looking for when you are trying to assess where you want to study business. Whoops, sorry, I just slipped ahead one. <clears throat> so just a few more stats um, that, about future-proofing your career. Uh, we know that for business education, Finding a job, finding internships, that is one of your number one drivers that you're looking for. And, and we stack up pretty well uh, when it comes to this. Um, this picture itself, uh, just so you, before I talk about the stats, the picture itself in the background, this is uh, what's known as the barcode in Oslo. And it is where a lot of our companies, uh, what a lot of companies are situated. And it does look like a barcode, but especially when it's well, when it's lit up at night. Uh, but that shows the connection and we're very much connected to companies, whether it be in Oslo or in Bergen, we have strong relationships with companies that uh, who seek, who provide opportunities for internships to our students and who also seek to hire our students when they graduate. Um, so 74% of uh, international graduates from uh, the class of 2021 um, landed jobs uh, before they graduated. 82% uh, of international students worked part-time or had internships while they were studying. That's something that international students uh, from outside of the EU can work up to 20 hours a week while they're um, while you're studying. And the wages are, are, are pretty good. Um, international students have told us and shared with us that they can cover most of their living expenses working 20 hours a week uh, in Norway because they're, they're, there are such good wages available to students. But I think one of the key figures that I wanted to just point out is that nine out of 10 international graduates landed jobs within six months of graduation. And a lot of students are now choosing to stay in Norway, which goes back to why we're offering Norwegian language classes as well, to help equip you or help you put something else in your toolbox to, to present to employers. But nine out of 10 international graduates who participated in the survey had jobs within six months of graduation. That's a pretty good track record in terms of getting future proofing your career. So what types of programs can you uh, expect at BI Norwegian Business School? We have at the, in English, we have uh, master's degrees and we have bachelor's degrees. Our master's degrees are varied, but if you're interested in finance or economics, we have the MSc in Applied Economics, we have an MSc in Finance. If you want to be a little bit more specialized in finance, we have the Quantitative Finance and Sustainable Finance. Again, going back to one of those cultural values, Sustainable Finance. Um, we actually started this program in Sustainable Finance in response to, like most of our programs, an industry need. Employers were coming to us and saying, we need the students to understand finance, but we also need this understanding of ESG and corporate responsibility. So we we developed a, a, a specialized master's program. If you're interested in sort of the marketing and communications area, we have a couple of options for you there. We have strategic marketing management, which is highly ranked. We have a new digital communication management program um, as well. And then we also have a joint program. So if you are interested in marketing and you want a truly global opportunity, you could spend your first year at BI and then your second year at Luis in Italy. And then you graduate with two degrees. So it's a joint program, your whole cohort, you'll start with a cohort in Oslo and then you'll end with a co that same cohort in uh, Italy. Um, if you are uh, quantitatively inclined, maybe you have a background in engineering or mathematics, perhaps you want to consider the business analytics or the MSc in data science for business. So let's face it, there's a lot, the companies are, are gathering a lot of data about us, but we need people who can take that data and turn it into knowledge and wisdom and help organizations make the best business decisions to move their organizations forward. So if that you're inclined that way, business analytics or data science for business may be the, an option for you. And then we also have the MSc in entrepreneurship and innovation, 
Uh, that's, a, you know, if you're interested in starting your own company, or maybe you're interested in working with companies that are scaling up, or you want to work in an innovation area within a corporation, this could be the program for you. One of our most unique programs is the MSc in Leadership and Organizational Psychology. So students from a business background are attracted to here because they want to learn more about what motivates employees, how do we keep our you know, most valuable asset motivated and developed. But then we also have students coming from a psychology, psychology background. So it's a real mix here and they want to take their understanding of psychology and behavior and put it in a workplace and put it in a management setting and put it in a business setting. So it's a real combination here. Um, and that particular program, the MSc in Leadership and Organizational Psychology is offered in Oslo and in Bergen. So these are our specialized degrees, but we also have a more general management degree, and that is the MSc in business, and you have a number of majors to choose from, eight in fact, to choose from. So maybe you're interested in accounting and finance, and economics, well, we have options for that. Then maybe you're interested more in what makes uh, organizations move forward. How do we make, how do we plan? How do we set goals? Well, maybe strategy and leadership and change is the, are the options that you might be considering. Um, given the last few years, we all know how important supply chain and operations management has become. Uh, you know, we saw, you know, a, a large tanker block the Suez Canal and what kind of chaos that created in the, in, in the world. So we know the importance of getting goods from an organization to, to, com to, um, to populations around the world. So ch supply chain and operations management may an be an option for you. And then, of course, marketing, a foundation to any business is the marketing. So you have some options here. The MSc in business, you need to have a business background in order to be able to go into the MSc in business and then choose one of these options for your, um, for your, as a major. And it's broad based. So you take, um, you will take this for two years. And in your third semester, there's different options, whether it be exchange, internship, but, or you're, and you're taking electives from one of the other majors as well. You can't just do all finance, you need to maybe do finance with supply chain or finance with leadership. So you get to choose electives from one of the other areas. And Campus Bergen, we have uh, two options for you if you want to work, live on, live on our West Coast. I think one of the key differences between uh, Norway is between Oslo and Bergen, um, and this is one of our professors um, in psychology and the leadership program said, in in uh, Oslo, it's very, the specialization is a real key. The key to our success in Bergen is it's very personal. This is a smaller campus. Uh, you really do get to know your professors. Um, you know, you collaborate with your professors, you connect with industry. Uh, day two, I was out for, um, I went out for matriculation this year. And on the second day, you were in front of um, industry associations to meet with them and they were pitching that first day an internship opportunity for students. So um, very connected to industry uh, in, uh, in Bergen. And here you have two options, the leadership and organizational psychology option, as well as the MSc in business with finance. Um, now, perhaps you are looking for a bachelor's program. Well, we have some options for you there as well. And these are all offered at our camp Oslo campus. We have the Bachelor of Business Administration, very common, uh, very well-known global brand, a BBA. Um, this is a three-year program. I'm sorry, our master's programs are two-year programs. This is a three-year program. And in your third year, you specialize and you have an option of finance or international business or shipping management. Shipping management going back to uh, Norwe Norwegian cultural values of the Vikings. They've been uh, on the seas and really know how to harness and make uh, harness the seas um, and make sure that goods get from one place to another. We also have data science for business at the bachelor's level as well. And we have digital business. Let's face it, organizations, companies around the world are all going digital. They're trying to figure out the tools that they need to make their work more efficient. And the bachelor of digital business can give you the foundation for that. We also, um, some students would require by, by Norwegian law to have a year of university uh, before starting in our three-year bachelor program. Um, and in that case, we do have a partnership with Yinköping University in, um, in Sweden. Uh, so you can get that first year and, the, and then come to us for your three-year bachelor. So it's a four-year 
track to getting a bachelor's degree from us. So a few practical matters. This is a very important. You will find so much information on our website, bi.edu. In the background here, you can see our library. This is one of the rooms in our li fabulous library, which has one of the best views in camp uh, in the city. Um, and you will find we are very open and transparent, and you will find all your information on the website. Some good things that are good to know. Um, one is our application deadline for international students. It's March 1st. The other thing that's really good to know is there's no application fee for us. It's free to apply. So even if you're not sure if you qualify um, and you can find all of our uh, um, admission criteria on our website and you can, we will also have another session, another webinar with Doc City in January that will talk about applications and admissions. Um, it doesn't cost you anything to apply. So you might as well throw your hat in the ring and see if you apply. We also offer guaranteed housing for international students. You need to apply for this um, by the, the deadline, of course. And it's not, you'll still have to pay the rent, uh, but uh, we will make sure that you don't have to find a place, your own place to live. We have very good uh, relationships with CO, which is uh, or in Oslo and Salmon in Bergen, which will, um, uh, ensure that you have a nice, uh, a nice place to live and you don't have to worry about that. So we're trying to remove some barriers here for access to education. No application fee, guaranteed, guaranteed housing. Uh, as we said, you can work and the salaries in Norway are pretty good uh, and you can earn uh, most of, uh, earn money to cover most of your living expenses. The other thing that once you're here and you have your national ID, you are also covered by the national health insurance system so you don't need to have additional health insurance after your first semester um, and we start our classes mid-august and we go till the middle of june so a little bit earlier start than some other places in the world uh, but uh, we take advantage of all that all the sunlight that we can in the early in in the late summer um, this is in the background is one of the stunning fjords in oslo and yes you can just see someone there in a green sweater who's just sitting on the edge of that rock. Trolls Tongan, it's called. Now, I get the opportunity to travel around the world and talk to prospective students, but I also get to reconnect with uh, former students, with our alumni. And here's a few things that they've shared with me along the way of their impressions and how they felt about their time at BI. And it does reinforce some of the messages I talked about earlier. It's clean, it's safe, you can walk anywhere, it's never crowded. And let's face it, chocolate is amazing. And let's, uh, you know, chocolate will get you through uh, good days and will get you through some days that are more challenging. Um, fresh seafood, clean water, the buses and the subways are always on time. I did see we had some people from Latin America and I've had stories from students from Mexico who said, you know, I was going down for the bus. You know, they're never on time at home. Here, they're on time. If it says 12.02, it'll be there at 12.02. So no lollyganging. You've got to be there on time. Um, you didn't need to know Norwegian. Uh, people learned that they did enjoy hiking in the woods and the mountains. Um, as I mentioned earlier, cozy, kushli is a big thing in Norway. And um, this is one of the fondest memories is being in a warm, cozy cabin on a cold fall day. And actually the student and some of the international students at our campus in Bergen just shared with us uh, some pictures from a cabin trip that they took this, uh, not this past weekend, but the weekend before. And they saw a, a Norwegian cabin in person and experienced uh, Taco Friday and, um, and hiking in the, in the mountains and hiking in the forest. So it's a great opportunity for you to learn a little bit more about Norwegian culture and get connected to nature. Here are um, a social, our social media accounts. We encourage you to stay connected with us. Um, at Student Life at BI is our Instagram account, and that's the student Instagram account, not the, we also have a corporate Instagram account, BI Norwegian Business School, but we also have the student voice, which is very important. I encourage you to send us emails at info at bi.no. We'd love to chat with you. We also have a team of international students that work with us. And if you want to speak directly with students, with a student, a current student, just pop us an email and we'll connect you with them. Um, I really appreciate uh, your attention. I'm going to stop sharing here if the technology works with me and hopefully answer some of your questions.
Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Shani, for the presentation. We actually received some questions while you were presenting. So thank right. you all for your uh, very interesting questions. So let's start with the first. We have Victoria that is asking, how competitive is to move and I guess also maybe to study in Norway? Do you have a limited number of seats? Uh, we, um, we're fortunate in that we're a private foundation, we're a private business school, and the majority of our programs are open enrollment, so we don't have a limited number of seats. If you're qualified, that's great, uh, and we don't have any caps, and one of our most popular programs, we now offer at two campuses, so that we ensure that we have seats at you, so you may want to choose Bergen um, over Oslo, for example, uh, to make sure that you get a seat in that particular program but no we have open enrollment perfect um do you also offer accommodation on campus so we talked about different campus accommodation how does it work right well, our campus is our campus is actually a city campus uh, in oslo in bergen we're right down on the harbor and actually the campus in, in Bergen has its own beach. So on a nice day, you might go to class and then go pop in and have a, you know, jump off the jump off the pier and go for a nice little swim. Um, and in Oslo, we are a city campus, essentially one block. So our, our the accommodation is not on campus, for example, but they're nearby. It could be there's in, in Oslo, there's a campus um, BSN, which is maybe a 10 minute walk, or you could be at Bjolsen, which is a 15 minute walk, or you could be at uh, near Songsvon, which will be a 20 minute subway ride. But in all cases, the buses or the um, Tabon in the metro stop right outside of campus. So it's easy to get from accommodation, your student accommodations to the campus. Great. Couple of questions. So we mentioned at the beginning, this webinar was mainly focused on study in Norway, but happy to answer also questions regarding the um, application as well. So someone was asking, so I'm originally from Guinea, but I have a Greece passport. So what are the different steps? So just in general, what are the steps for the application? Can it be done online? And additional question would be from Marco regarding uh, language requirement. Okay. So all of the programs that I spoke of today are taught in English. Um, so there will be a different language requirement for bachelor and for master. So master is a higher, a higher language requirement. So a 6.5 on IELTS, uh, bachelor is a 6.0 on the IELTS, but we also take the TOEFL. Um, in regards to applying, uh, it, everything is online. And it, as I mentioned, it's, there is no application fee. You just need to make sure that you have all the documents that are required. In general, it's your diploma, it's a CV, it's a, it's a, it's a financial plan showing us how you plan to um, finance your education. <clears throat> and then um, you might, for the master's, there's also the GMAT requirement, unless you're from a partner school. Amazing. Um, Lucrecia is asking if you help students to find a job after graduation. And then she said, I'm not sure I understood if the master one or two years we mentioned, but very good. We can Perfect. also. Um, Thank you. Thank again. you. So we all of our masters are two years and our bachelor is three years. So um, and then when it comes to finding jobs, we have close connections with with industry. So we might start our classes the middle of August, the second week of September there's career days. So we've got companies coming uh, a lot. We provide, uh, we have a career center which can provide counseling when it comes to your LinkedIn profile. They'll even take your photo for your LinkedIn profile and they'll walk you through um, interviews. They'll walk you through your resume. They, we have a career portal where all of our students are welcome to apply to the jobs that are posted there because employers do come to us seeking students with a BI education. So we do prov there's a lot of supports there and all of our programs uh, have an internship uh, option as well. And a lot of students uh, take advantage of that. Great. Um, Paula, she connected a little bit later. There's no problem at all. So just wondering if there is any option regarding scholarships. So I know BI is a private university, but if there are any sort of uh, support. Yeah, we do have a scholarship program. I recommend that you go to our website and, and look at that. So we have um, scholarships for bachelor and we have scholarships for master. Uh, one of the ones that we introduced last year, going back to some of the Norwegian social values of equality and uh, sustainability, um, is that we are 
committed to some UN goals and we introduced the uh, scholarship specifically for women in finance and tech uh, programs. So you will find the scholarships uh, on our website, but we do have a scholarship program. But um, we also encourage that students look for other options for funding their studies as well. Um, and you can find our tuition information on the website as well. As I mentioned, you're looking at maybe uh, 10, depending on bachelor or master, 10 to 13,000 US dollars per year versus what we know that it can be in other countries. <laughs> Um, Elliot, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing it right, asking, can I have, get graduate of two degrees? So double degree option. Are we there do have, any? Yes, we do. So again, if you go to our website and you look at the specific program, there are some options for limited options for double degree at the master level, uh, not at the bachelor level, but at the master level. But we also, if you're interested in marketing, we have that joint uh, marketing program with Luis, where you do one year at uh, BI in Oslo, and then you do your second year with Luis in Rome as a cohort and end up with two degrees. So that's our one joint degree, but we do have some a couple of uh, double degree options at the master level. Depends on the program. Amazing. In fact, we, have, we have one at the MSC in business where you could go to, to Canada. <laughs> That's very interesting. Yeah. And in that case, do they need to submit a different sort of application or is it similar? No, you would apply for your, for example, the MSC in business, you apply through us. And then once you're in the program, there are some things that you would do internally to apply for the second option, except for the BI Louise program, you apply for that at the very beginning. And when you're admitted to that, they've all, they're also uh, our, our colleagues at Luis are also looking at your application. Couple of question: one from Bazarti, another one from another student. Um, living costs of living and studying Norway. So, on average, how much it costs compared yeah. to other European cities? Yeah. Um, uh, as I've uh, we say that you should have, well, the government says that you should have <laughs> uh, around 130,000 uh, Norwegian kroner because uh, Norway is not a European nation, so we don't work on the euro, but that is about 11, you know, 11 to 12,000 euros per year for living costs. Now you might want a little bit more if you plan to travel around Norway and try to travel around Europe. Um, but if I, for, if I could say it in American dollars, we'd, we say that your total package, tuition and living expenses, is around twenty-five to thirty thousand U.S. dollars per year. That will be tuition and your living expenses. Amazing. Uh, Janina is asking. So in this case, uh, he or she's from Romania, asking if there is any sort of difference in terms of application among students coming from the European uh, Union or outside? At this time, there isn't. However, the government is considering that and there is a public consultation. Um, we will certainly update our website as soon, as soon as we know if that is a decision that the government has made. Great. But right now, everybody pays the same. Norwegians pay the same, Europeans pay the same, and students from outside the EU also pay the same. Uh, tutoring service, asking if you offer any sort of tutoring service and if you have short courses or exchange programs. Um, tutoring, we have a group, we do have learning assistance and we have, a uh, you know, it's something that a lot of students do access, especially at this time of year when they, you know, starting to think about exams right around the corner. Uh, but we do have a team of learning assistants who would provide that sort of extra support that you need. Uh, we also have some students who offer their own private tutoring uh, options as well. Um, we do have exchange partners. You can go onto our website and just search partner institutions and you can see who our exchange op opportunities are, uh, exchange programs. Um, at the master level, the options are more limited because it's they're so specialized. The bachelor level, there's many more opportunities for exchange partners. And what was the third part, Federica? Um, <laughs> it, it was basically if you offer exchange or short courses. Short courses, um, we don't have any, sh no, not short courses, not at the bachelor or the master level, at the executive level, yes. And I guess the executive would be a little bit more of work experience. We're talking about like towards MBA or executive. Perfect. Exactly. Exactly. Um, Livia is asking, is there an interview to pass? And can you also meet students before you shared with us an Instagram account? Is there a way for them to connect with alumni or current students? Right. 
So um, there isn't an interview process. This is all based on your, your paper application, not your paper application, your online application. But we look at all your documents and it's based on your, your, um, your academic background, your education background. Um, just to reinforce with our master programs, these are all pre-experienced masters, so we don't take work experience into consideration. It's all based on your, your academic qualifications. Um, and the second part of that question was? If they can connect with a oh. graduate on my well, we, we like I said, you can we can connect you with some current students um, in my team. We have a group of international students. Uh, we have Brazil, uh, Brazilian, Vietnamese, someone from China, from some from someone from Somalia, Germany, Italy. So we have a group of students that work directly with us. And that's their job is to talk to prospective students. So if you would like to connect with a student, email info at BI. Explain your background and say you would really like to speak with one of uh, our international recruitment student assistants. Nice. Before we talked about IELTS and any other language um, proficiency test, if someone has a US citizenship and I guess studied in English, yeah. uh, do they need to take an English language test? No, that's uh, no. If you're if you're a, if you are from the U.S. or Canada, you don't need a or Australia or England. You do not need an, an English test. You are um, you, you. We waive that because it's your your mother tongue. Um, and uh, also, if you've taken your bachelor's, if you're applying for a master's program and you've taken your full bachelor's degree in English, maybe you're from Germany and your program was totally in English, you would also we would also waive that requirement for you there. Um, um, if you are a bachelor, if you are currently a high school student and you're in the international baccalaureate program in English, you would not need to do the IELTS because you're doing your your high school program in English. Perfect. Thanks for clarifying, Dave. Um, Aman has a question for the Masters in Finance. So you mentioned for the requirements, some of the programs required a GMAT, yeah. just in general, if there is anything to keep in mind. And another question I wanted to ask you, thinking about visa and all, how early should they put an application through any sort of uh, recommendation that you feel like giving to the students? Okay. So GMAT, all of our all of our master's program. If your if your education is from outside of Norway or outside the Nordics, we do require a GMAT. However, we do waive that requirement for anybody who's come from a partner school. So, for example, um, Mexico, uh, we have partner schools with Tech de Monterrey and ETAM, so we would waive it for that. They're an ex they were, we've had relationship with Tech de Monterey for almost 30 years as an exchange partner. So we know the school. So when we know the school because we're partners, we will waive, we can waive that GMAT requirement or the GRE. Um, and when it comes to the GMAT, we look for a 600. Um, but again, apply. Um, if you have a higher GPA and just a slightly lower GMAT, we will look at it holistically. Um, when it comes to the study permit, We'll walk you through that process. So you don't need to worry about that just yet. Let's get you ad admitted first, and then we can walk you through the process. But um, everything, if you are interested in exploring what that process would look like, there is a website you can go to called udi.no. That's udi.no. Um, and that is the Norwegian um, Directorate of Immigration. And you can just type in, I'm from Canada. I want to apply for, and then I've study permit and I'm going to apply from Canada and it will show you the steps of what you need to do. But again, not to worry, we will walk you through that process. Uh, it's one of the reasons why we have guaranteed housing. Um, you will need to deposit uh, your, your tuition and living expenses to show that you have the financial means to support yourself. But don't worry about that right now. We'll walk you through that process. Not a problem. And in case someone put an application through and it doesn't go right the first time, can they retry if something changed in their sure. student career? Or... Yeah, definitely, definitely. You know, we have some students who may not do well on the GMAT, for example, and then uh, they they receive a, I'm sorry, we, we, we can't accept you right now. If you improve your grades, come back to us. Uh, that's absolutely no problem. Again, it's free to apply, so you've got nothing to lose. Um, and yeah, so definitely, definitely reapply, reapply. We do have high GPA standards on our master's degree. It's the equivalent of a B on the ECTS scale or B, uh, considered a B plus on the uh, American scale. 
uh, plus the GMAT. Uh, so it is tough to get in, but some people can re will retake exams or improve their grades, um, or they might have be slightly lower on the GPA, but have a really good GMAT, as again, we will look at things holistically. Question regarding tuition, I guess probably the website is the best yes. place to go, right? I, re I will refer you to the website because we've got tuition for the master's programs um, might have differing tuition and then the bachelor program uh, is listed separate, has a different tuition as well. But as again, we're somewhere in the range of 10 to 13,000 US do dollars per year at this po at this time. Perfect. So we come towards the end of the presentation. We answer all the questions. If you have any additional questions, feel free to drop them into the chat, the Q&A. Uh, very important, we will follow up after this webinar with an email. So there will be, the event is recorded, so you will be able to rewatch it. And we're also going to share with you some contact details that you can refer in case you have any additional question. There will also be another webinar in the upcoming month where we'll be focusing more on the program. So all the questions that you actually asked tonight, um, we will still keep you posted. So you'll also be able to find out a little bit more in details about the program, the requirements, um, placements, the application and, and everything. And uh, Shani mentioned she will be in India for a recruitment trip over the next few few weeks. So if you are actually connected from India, you might yes. have the opportunity to connect. Uh, Sean, by to yes, if you are from India, drop by to see us at the QS uh, World Grad for Fair Tour, where we will be in Delhi, Mumbai, and Bangalore. Um, please do drop us an email. Uh, we will lo we'd love to connect you with some students. Um, we're actually very sad, one of our students which is a good thing. One of our students just completed an internship with the Norwegian Refugee Council, and now we'll be working with them um, part-time and then full-time when she graduates. So unfortunately, she's going to be leaving us. But those are the types of stories that we want to be able to share with you. So if you want to speak directly with one of our students, please do so. We also host our own uh, information sessions online. So please go to our website. We have um, our information sessions online are the student perspective, and that's exactly what we call them. They're, in, they're international student perspective sessions. So current students will talk about their experience around certain themes or the programs. So we encourage you to go to the website and sign up for um, all of our events and our newsletters so you can keep uh, in touch and drop us a line anytime. I really appreciate you taking the time tonight to, to spend some time. Tonight, my time, maybe today, your time. Uh, spending in this last hour with us. Um, BI has some exciting opportunities for you and studying Norway can really pay off and help you uh, for future, pro future pr proof your career by giving you some fresh perspectives on some on business, on sustainability and on values uh, in the world. So thank you for your time. Thank you so much for your time, all of you for staying connected. So we look forward to seeing you next time at the next live webinar. And, you know, why not in person in Norway? So thank you so much and have a great rest of your day. Hope to see thank you in you. Norway. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.